there friends, it's Amanda here to show you two math activities that we're going to be doing this week. I wanted to share with you this first one, it's called Strawberry Patch Edition. This is working on the skill of adding double digit numbers. So I'm going to move this off to the side. This, by the way, is the bag that I was keeping it in. And it has the activity center directions on it. Uh, it gives the teacher a little bit of information down here and it gives the directions. So I'm going to set that off to the side here. And this activity is a really great one to introduce adding more than one digit. And so that's what I'm primarily going to be using it for. So I'm using this with uh, a child in first grade. So so we are going to be using this activity after I have introduced how to add double digit numbers. But this is also a great activity just for reinforcement, for extra practice, that kind of thing. So you could use it with um, kids, you know, in second grade as well. It's, it's a great activity. Now, now all you need for this activity is a dry erase marker if you are going to laminate the cards. And then, if you're not going to laminate the cards, then you could just use regular pencils. Uh, but I laminated mine. And then you need some sort of manipulative. Now, since this activity has a strawberry theme, I would normally use strawberry erasers that I have, just little erasers. But, since it's March, the kids have been begging me to use our little March St. Patrick's Day manipulatives. So that's what we're going to do. And let me just kind of show you really quick. I have just a few different items for March that we are using until St. Patrick's Day. And then after St. Patrick's Day, I'm going to switch to our Easter manipulatives uh, and our spring manipulatives because Easter comes early this year. So I want to have some time to use those. Uh, but I'm going to show you these ones really quick. I just have, these are actually stickers. They're little foam stickers and they're just kind of mixed up. You know, I've got some shamrocks and things like that that they can use in that basket. And here, let me show you. In this other basket right here, I have some gold coins. Some of these things uh, came from the dollar store. So these ones are gold colored and these ones are green kind of colored. So little plastic golden green coins. These are also from the dollar, dollar tree, dollar store. And these are just little foam type you know, glittery coins and shamrocks. And then the last basket here just has little ducks with shamrocks on them. So I thought those were cute. So those are the different items that we have to use during the month of March. And so the kids have been begging to use those. So we're gonna use those even though they don't really go with this particular activity. All right, so let's get into this and let's show you what we're gonna be doing. So this activity has cards that have different addition problems. None of these have regrouping yet. So like I said, it's a great way to introduce adding double digit numbers because you're not regrouping yet. And so you're just practicing the steps. So what I have the student do is they take a card I have the student circle their ones place to remind them that they're going to add their ones place first. We're using a dry erase marker so that we can just wipe it right off the card when we're done. They add two plus one and they write three, four plus four and they write eight. And then their final step is to cover up the answer on the bottom and they can use their manipulatives. So I'm just gonna grab uh, one of our little shamrock coins here and cover up my answer. And then I would be completed with that card and I can go on to the next one. Now, what I also have the kids do, if they're having trouble with the addition, we can sometimes use our touch point dots. So I would have them circle their ones place because we need to add our ones first always. And then I would say, okay, start with the bigger number and count up. The bigger number's on top this time. So we're gonna start with six and then we're gonna count and we'll put our dots for each one that we count. Seven, eight, nine. So six plus three equals nine. And I don't know if you could tell that, but I put the, try to make it bigger. I put the dots on the end of the three there. Those are our touch point dots. 
So sometimes we practice it that way. Then we'll go to our tens place and we're going to add 4 plus 3. We always start with the bigger number and then we add up. So we say the bigger number, 4, and then we count up. 5, 6, 7. So our answer there is 79 and then we're going to cover up 79 with one of our manipulatives. This time I'm going to grab a little duck. All right, so you get the idea. Again, if I had, if it wasn't March and we weren't using these manipulatives, I would be using my little strawberry erasers just to kind of match the theme. So there's a whole handful of cards here. We'll go through each card. Well, we'll go through as many as we have time for. And this is a great center activity if you're a, a classroom teacher and you have a lot of kids and you want to keep them, um, their minds sharp and keep them working. This would be a great center activity for them to sit down and work on these cards and try to find their answers. If you want to be able to keep their answers so that you can go back and check it because you're not able to sit down there with them, then just have them color in their answer like this instead of covering it up. And that way you can just grab the card really quick and quickly see what the student's answer was. Okay, so let's move on to the second math activity I wanted to show you. Okay, this activity is called pizza multiplying. And again, I just have the directions here on the front of the bag where I keep the activity. What the students do is this is the mat that it comes with. I usually put these mats in a plastic sleeve when the students are doing the activity, but I forgot to bring my plastic sleeves here with me while I was doing the video. So, but, but yeah, if I was doing this with a student, I would have it in a plastic sleeve or I would laminate it so it's not just going to get beat up. Okay, so I have cards here and what the students do is, you, you know, you shuffle up the cards and then the students just grab a card out of the out of the deck. I'm going to place this one here. And this card has four pizzas on it. And then the students have to look and see how uh, the pepperonis that are on each pizza. So there are four slices and three pepperonis on each slice. They are going to build that multiplication problem over here with some manipulatives. We are going to go ahead and use the manipulatives that I just have sitting out here. And we're going to use some small little coins here. And we're going to build it. So we're going to take one, two, three. We're going to just pretend these coins are our pepperonis. So there's three. And then there's another set of three. One, two, three. All right, so I have four groups with three in each group. All right, so I see my picture, I'm building it, and now I'm going to write it down. Now, I don't have this in a plastic sleeve, so I don't really want to write on this, um, but if I had it in my plastic sleeve, I would write my, use my dry erase marker to write to the problems on these pizzas. So this multiplication sentence, in fact, I can just use this plastic here. Sorry guys, I'm improvising. All right, so what they would do, is you would have this mat in a plastic sleeve and they would write four times three equals, and now I'm gonna count my groups of three. So <clears throat> I have three, six, nine, 12. Or if they have to break it out, they can break it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. That's why you have them build it so that they're seeing multiplication is repeated addition. And so if they have to add it, they can add it. All right, so we have 12 coins or 12 pepperonis is really what this is supposed to be. And um, so our problem is four pizzas times three pepperonis. How many pepperonis on each pizza? Well, that would be 12. And so the last step is to find the card with the answer. So here I have all the cards with different answers on them. 12 is my answer, so I would put my 12 card right there. So they're supposed to write the problem here and then find their answer card and place it on that one right there. So that's what they would do. And then once they would finish with that one, you would remove this card, you'd remove your coins, and you'd start over. So this is another great introduction type activity where you could introduce them to multiplication. So let's look at another one here. I'm just going to grab another card. And real easy, this card <clears throat> has two pieces 
pieces of pizza and one, two, three, four, five, six uh, on each pizza. So we're going to get the same answer here, but that's great. I think that's great because then if I were doing this with a child and they first did the problem that was three times four and then they pulled the next card and the next card was two times six, I would relate that. Look at that. They both equal 12 and we could talk about that kind of thing. So anyway, so with this card, again, I would have the student do the same thing. Okay, so I'm going to build six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to build another set of six. Two times six. They're going to write two times six and then they're going to find their answer card equals 12. Sorry, I don't have this in my plastic sleeve or I would be writing it for you, but you get the idea. So they would write on here two times six is 12. Um, and then of course I would use a dry erase marker so that we could erase it when we do the next problem. All right, that is it guys. I really like this activity because they're seeing the multiplication in action. They can add it if they need to because they've got their manipulatives there and they're seeing really the meaning behind multiplication. Multiplication is repeated addition. Now, these are obviously very easy multiplication problems that eventually they're going to memorize and not have to even think about. But when you're introducing multiplication or you're just starting out with it, it's great to give the children a foundation of how it's done, why it's done, what is multiplication. So I think that this activity in particular gives them that. Now both of these activities that I showed you today are from my Math to Enjoy and Learn uh, curriculum. So if you're interested in that, I will leave links below. You can get these uh, uh, activities individually or you could um, purchase the entire bundle. Okay guys, so look in that description box below if you're looking for links to any of this. And I appreciate you watching. We'll see you on the next one. Have a great day. Bye.